Hello, I'm Giancarlo Fissore and let me talk about some work that I've been doing with uh, Nick Vasiloglu on uh, reasoning with the large language models and relational AI's query language. <clears throat> so let's start with an example. So here I'm using a large language model to translate uh, a sentence from English to French. And uh, here you can see that I get the um, correct answer. Uh, this is not surprising, uh, as we know by now that large language models are very good with translation. But what I want to argue here is that there is a lot more going on here, because if you look at my prompt, I actually asked for the translation in an implicit way. So the language model was actually able to pick up what uh, was the meaning of my sentence and give the correct answer to it. So there is a lot more, uh, there is a, a lot going on here and uh, it's an interesting question to, to, to think about what the language model needs to understand and if the language model needs to think to give this kind of answers, right? Uh, so this is of course a research question, uh, very interesting to think about, but we don't have a clear answer to this. About what, uh, however, what I want to say is that there is, a, uh, I think, a useful way to think about this. And this way is to say that large language models are generally good at thinking fast. And by fast thinking, we mean that kind of thinking, which is instinctive and intuitive, if you want. For instance, if I give you the sentence war end and I ask you to complete it, probably most of you would complete it with peace, like the title from the Tolstoy novel, right? And this is definitely an instinctive answer that we give. So no surprise here that also the language model uh, answers in the same way. And uh, generally we see that language models are kind of good at this um, instinctive uh, kind of answers. However, let's now consider a different question, uh, which is the following. So you go into a toy store and there's a toy bat and a toy ball. So together they cost $1.10 and the bat costs a dollar more than the ball. So how much does the ball cost? Well, obviously 10 cents, right? Well, if uh, I convinced you with my answer, uh, like most people would be, that's because I elicit uh, a fast thinking reply from you with my suggestion. Uh, but the point here is that if you think about it, the actual answer is that the ball costs five cents and the bat costs one dollar and five cents. You can pro probably reach this conclusion pretty fast, but here the point is that uh, this is definitely not an instinctive answer you can give. You definitely need to think about this. So you need to do some kind of reasoning to, to get this answer. And so problems that require this kind of uh, uh, thinking are, are problems that uh, require slow thinking, we can say. And slow thinking is the kind of thinking which is more deliberative and logical. Um, so already people struggle more with the slow thinking kind of problems than with fast thinking problems. So it's not surprising that also large language models struggle most with these kind of problems. However, it's um, actually uh, very interesting to see that uh, advanced uh, LLM systems are actually able to answer these kind of questions. For instance, here you see ChatGPT uh, given this, um, this question, lays down a nice answer where it writes down in an equation form, then uses some Python code to actually uh, run this uh, equation through a symbolic uh, solver and gets back an answer and gives you the answer. So, uh, this is a super nice example that I think makes um, a very interesting point, which is that uh, uh, language models can be used together with the symbolic systems to um, solve more complicated problems. Uh, of course, here is uh, mathematical equations, and it's relatively easy to fine-tune a language model to solve mathematical equations, even though not very complicated one, probably. But what about general reasoning? And for that, uh, a possible answer is to use a reasoning engine. And by reasoning engine, I mean uh, a system which is deterministic in nature and that can access a database of facts which are deemed uh, true. Uh, and we can define rules over these facts and then the system can perform inference uh, over these facts and rules. And the relational AI declarative language is, uh, uh, can be used uh, as a reasoning engine. And now we can see a, an instance of the, a, a probable instance where we use relational AI and language models uh, to solve a reasoning task. Uh, we choose just a standard reasoning task, which is planning in the blocks word domain. So here in the blocks word domain, we just have a set of color blocks, only four valid actions that we can perform, which are picking up a block, unstuck a block from on top of another, put down a block and stacking a block on top of another. And then we have a set of constraints. So we can only pick up a block, uh, uh, one block at a time. Uh, I can only pick up one block if my end is empty and so on. 
planning means that uh, we are given an initial state and the target state and we will ask our LLM to come up with a plan that uh, uh, a sequence of actions that executed uh, in sequence will give uh, will take us from the initial state to the target state. So what we do here is that we encode the valid actions and the constraints in a relational AI system. Then we ask the LLM for the plan and then we have relational AI system check on the plan given by, by the LLM step by step. And if the LLM is wrong in some step, we can provide feedback to the LLM and keep going like that. Uh, I hope the idea is clear, but let's just see it in action. Uh, so here I have prepared an example. You can see here our initial state is this one where we have that the blue block is on top of the orange block. And what I ask as a target state is that uh, I want to inv invert these two blocks. So I want the orange block to be on top of the blue block. Uh, now you can see that, uh, um, and yeah, and what is interesting to note is that remember that we don't have like the invert action, right? So the language model cannot answer by just saying, okay, just invert the two blocks, but it, it has to give you like valid actions. And this is encoded in relational AI system and also the LLM has been instructed to only use these actions. You can see that the LLM starts by telling me, okay, just pick up the blue block. And uh, here you can actually see the text which is generated by the LLM. We can see a reasoning and an action. This is because we prompted the LLM in a chain of thought fashion, uh, which is generally, um, which generally gives better results for reasoning tasks. Uh, but then you can see that the relational AI systems, the system deemed this action as invalid. And if we look at this, uh, this is because the blue block is not on the table. And this was one of the rules. So you can only pick up a block if the block is on the table. Uh, so rational AI system correctly invalidates this action. This is the feedback that we feed back to the LLM. And uh, now you can see the new answer from the LLM. And uh, with, the, with, the, with the feedback we, and uh, forcing a reasoning step, we see that uh, the LLM is able to correctly understand that uh, you cannot pick up a block. So it was wrong with that and it comes up with the correct action this time. So to unstack the blue block first. And now this time the relational AI system will tell you, okay, this action is valid and it performs the action. So it unstuck the blue block from the orange block. So now we can go on and uh, ah, yeah, we can also see what uh, we feed the LLM in, this, in this, uh, this time. So we just say, okay, you did perform this specific action correctly. Uh, we give the target again just to help the LLM memory. Uh, we ask for reasoning and action in a chain of thought fashion. And once we are done, we want the LLM to answer with done. Uh, so, okay, we can go on with that. We can only inspect the, um, the output of the model, but you can see that now we go on by putting down the blue block. This is a valid action, so we perform it. Now we pick up the orange block. This is again a valid action, we perform it. Stack the orange block on top of the blue block. This is valid, we perform it. And now the LLM says, okay, we are done. So once we are done, uh, a final step is that the relational AI system will check the target state with the state that we reach now, and it will actually validate or not the plan that we obtain. In this case, we reached our target, so the plan is valid. Okay, so I hope the interface is clear. We can maybe see it live in action. So I prepare some examples and let's see how this goes. So here I am asking for a slightly more complicated problem if you want, where we have uh, these blocks stacked in this way. This is our initial state. And what I ask is that I want uh, to invert the blue block and the orange block. And I also want to invert the yellow and the red block. You can see here that the first action that the LLM tells me to perform is to unstack the blue block from the orange block. And this is a valid action. So we perform it and the rational AI system correctly validated the action. Uh, so feeds back this answer to the LLM asking for the next action. The LLM comes to the next action and they say, okay, so now I can put down the blue block. So this is going to be again a valid action and it's validated by the rational AI system and so on and so on. So at the end, we should reach the target state. Anyways, I hope this is clear. So let's get back to this one second, because here I just wanted to note that, uh, like in this case, you note that uh, the LLM would have not been able to actually reach a valid plan by itself because it performed an incorrect action at the first step, right? However, with the rational AI system and feeding back uh, to the, um, the, the error to the system, we were able to correct uh, the LLM and in the end to generate a valid plan that we can use. So we did generate the correct reasoning there. 
So maybe let's see here if we also, yeah, we're still, okay, here we also reached the, the correct, ah, uh, no, we are still working on it, okay. Anyways, okay, I hope this, uh, uh, this is, um, this is, this is um, an interesting case, and uh, yeah, I think this is useful for, for us to, to draw some conclusions, and uh, basically the conclusion will be that uh, coupling LLMs and uh, a, a powerful reasoning engine, you can actually solve the complex reasoning problems. Uh, this is because LLMs and reasoning engines are complementary to each other in the sense that the LLM uh, can, uh, for instance, let you um, interact with the problem in a very natural way, which is by taking natural language instructions. And then the LLM will actually produce the intuition and heuristics to solve your reasoning problem and it also understands the semantics of what you need uh, the system to perform, right? On the other hand, uh, the reasoning engine, such a relational AI system, will provide you with the factual knowledge, uh, the logical inference done in a correct way and not only mathematical equations but more general logic and all of this can be used to actually steer and correct the, the generation of the LLM to reach your uh, objective. So this concludes uh, the demo. Um, thank you for your attention and I leave here um, some quick resources.